So this video, video first on chapter 29, Revolutions in the National States of the Atlantic World. So the key concepts of the modern world, uh, the modern period, were nationalism, revolution, and reform, industrialization and global capitalism, imperialism and nation-state formation, and, and global migration. So one of the big ideas is revolution. Political, for example, political revolutions such as the American, French, Haitian, and Latin American revolutions, intellectual revolutions in the form of conservative and classical liberalism, social revolutions involving the roles of women in the place of slavery, and a mastered out of the modern world, nationalism. Especially nationalism is used for motiv used for motivating soldiers. So the Enlightenment was really so a little background. So background to the Enlightenment, it was basically focusing on applying scientific revolution and the natural sciences and fit in thinking about political and social sciences. For example, political science. Historically, most large our agricultural societies were ruled by a single king, emperor, sultan, khan, whatever, with periodic feudal or decentralized rule by aristocratic elites. For example, the Zhou Dynasty. Of course, you did have a few democracies and republics sprinkled in there, but most of these societies were pretty autocratic. The king kingly rule was mostly commonly justified by tradition or religion, for example, the mandate of heaven and the divine right of kings. However, Enlightenment thinkers began to question these long-held ideas of sovereignty. One of the one of the most important philosophers of the Enlightenment was John Locke. He believed that go the government was a social con. Government, he thought of government as a social contract between the rulers and the ruled. He argued that the rulers derived power from the consent of the governed, individual, and that the individuals retain personal, natural, unalienable rights and delegate political rights to rulers in exchange if these ruler, that these rulers protect their rights. He was basically justifying the glorious revolution and the notion of parliamentary supremacy. Voltaire used literary satire and harsh direct criticism to call for religious toleration and freedom of expression. Jean-Jacques Rousseau demanded legal and political equality and expressed the revolutionary ideal that members of society were collectively the sovereign and thus should rule. His work, The Social Contract, not to be confused with, you know, with uh, John Locke's idea of the social contract, argued that society is collectively the sovereign. Basically, it relies on the will of the people. There was little indication of forthcoming revolution in the mid 18th century. The 14, the 13 colonies regarded the, the 13 American colonies under British rule regarded themselves increasingly as British subjects and were economic pros, prosperous. However, things began to change in the French Indian War. It was expensive and extensive, overlapping with the Seven Years' War. Range encompassed conflicts. It was part of a the Seven Years' War involved conflicts in Europe and India. British victory ensure, ensured global dominance and North American prosperity. However, however, the war was very expensive and the British really needed to actually pay up, so they increased taxation in the 1760s to pay for the, to pay for the Seven Years' War. The, part of the tax burden, burden partially falls to the colonies, for example, the Sugar Act, the Stamp Act, the Quartering Act, which made the housing of British troops to keep According to the, the, the fact that the colonists must house British troops in the Tea Act, but the, the colonial the colonial colonialists are pretty pissed off, so they boycott British products and attack British officials. They launch protests such as the Boston Tea Party, where tea is dumped in a Boston Harbor to protest against the Tea Act. They, this is basically a tax revolt based around the whole notion of no taxation without representation. The Continental Congress was formed in 1774, court, which and coordinates policy, colo, coordinates uh, colonial colonists' resistance to British rule, British policies. Uh, in July four, on July four, seventeen seventy six, they adopted the Declaration of Independence against usurpations. This was heavily influenced by Locke, as it was focused on the retention of individual rights and sovereignty based on the consent of the governed. So this is a you know, this is a you know basically a map depicting the so the British the British colonies, um, as and along with some of the major battles of the American Revolution. Built now building it now building an independent state based on the Enlightenment principles will take a while. Military conflict would cease at Yorktown in seventy eighteen eighty one and seven it's at Yorktown in seventeen eighty one, with the Treaty of Paris in seventeen eighty three, having what. 
However, the uh, it would take until 1783 for the British to actually recognize American independence in the Treaty of Paris. Uh, in 1787, the Constitution of the United States was drafted to replace the corrupt, the not the corrupt, the, the ineffective Articles of Confederation that led to a very weak, decentralized federal government. It guaranteed political and legal equality for white men and property. However, over time, it, this broadened the over time the American uh, the Amer over time the United States would broaden the implications of enlightenment values of freedom and equality as well as popular sovereignty to all Americans. The French Revolution drew, drew inspiration from the American experience, but it proved much more radical in scope, time frame, and ideals. It repudiated the old or order known as the ASEAN regime and sought to replace it with a new cultural, social, and, pol and sl cultural, social, and political order. So, the, Amer the French Revolution was caused by Enlightenment ideals as well as the inspiration of the American Revolution. There's also the issue of a staggering national debt and a fiscal crisis, partly from funding the American Revolution. There's a resent there's resentment at privileges, especially tax and the status of the aristocrats, as well as the extravagance and foreignness of Austrian Marie Antoinette and the court. Also, you had bad harvests. The opportunity presented itself by the summoning of the Estates General. The Estates General was the sub now the Estates General was an assembly that represented the entire population for groups known as estates. It served as the national legislature or basically to offer us new taxes. However, it it hadn't met for like a hundred and fifty years. It's basically a pushback on absolutism. There are three estates. The first estate, which the first estate, what compares to the Roman Catholic clergy. Who, who numbered 100,000. Second state, nobles, 400,000. And the third estate, everyone else. Basically, 95% of the population, ser including serfs, free peasants, urban residents, and merchants. All, each of the estates had one vote, and thus, uh, and thus the rights of a few would continue despite their wishes and the welfare of many, since the fact that every every vote, every vote, the third estate, like, since, since the fact that the first and se second estates can block any motion by the first estate through block voting, since they have since they have a two to f they ha since they have two f two thirds of the vote. After several weeks of debate, members of the first estate withdrew from the estates general and proclaimed themselves to be the rightful national assembly. They swear an oath in a, called the Tennessee Court oath, pledging to write a new constitution. Public support and fear of reaction resulted in storming the Bastille on July 4th, 1789. The National Assembly began to pass a series of laws aimed at dismantling the old authority. Pat also passed the Declaration of the Rights of Man, Man and the Citizen, proclaiming the equality of all men, the, the idea that sovereignty resides in the people, and the principles of liberty, property, and security. Basically, its goals were liberty, equality, and fraternity. So this is a, a relief depicting the tennis court oath. The National Assembly abolishes the old social order, seizing church lands and redefining clergy as citizens. The new constitution retains the king, but he is subject to the legislative authority. France essentially becomes a limited constitutional monarchy. However, foreign threats and royal treason pushes radicals to the forefront. A new, more radical legislative body of a convention takes power. It was elected... It was elected by universal male suffrage that, abol that eventually abolishes the monarchy. In 1793, uh, King Louis and Queen Marie Antoinette are guillotined. They all, the convention also passes the Levy en Masse en Masse, the universal conscription for war, relying on patriotic power. Universal conscription would magnify human resources. Basically, basically it all, basically it Man, it stated that citizenship generated more of its subjecthood. It's analogous to exploit adva advantages of African bananas, Chinese chopper rice, African manioc, Irish potatoes, and alf an alf an alf an alf Maximilian Robespierre would become the leader of the Committee of Public Safety, the most radical period of the French Revolution. He was leader of the rad radical Jacobins, and he dominated the convention from 1793 to 1794. He closed under him, the churches are closed, and the priests are forced to marry. He re his, uh, his, his radicals eradicate all remaining elements of the old regime. They reorganize the work week and calendar to metric time and execute 40,000 cons revolutionaries and, and would imprison 300,000 suspected enemies. He promoted the cult of reason as a secular alternative to Christianity. 
So this is basically a like picture depicting uh, depicting the religion of the cult of the supreme being. Basically, it's just a fanatical obsession with secularism and reason. Eventually, this this radical period leads to counter uh, a reactionary movement. In 1794, Robespierre is arrested and sent sent to the guillotine. Basically, this is an example of the revolution eating its own children. Conservative men seized control of France and sought to rule through a new institution known as the Directory. However, they are unable to re resolve the economic and military problems of revolutionary France. The Directory faced constant challenges to, to its authority from, the le from, bo from both the liberals and the conservatives and outside forces. This is, bas this is basically a perfect timing for a man with a plan. And that man is Napoleon Bonaparte. He was from a minor Corsican noble family, you know, just like just like a lot of other important significant figures, they were often from the peripheries, just Hitler and Stalin. Revolu the revolution gives Napoleon a chance to shine. He, is, he becomes a general at age 24 and is a mat brilliant military and rises to become a brilliant military strategist and PR spitter. He joins the director in 1799 and then overthrows it. He imposes a new constitution, naming himself first consul and eventually crowning himself emperor. He, uses, he cleverly uses plebiscites to legitimize and solidify his rule. His, pro, his appeal was the promise of stability for a people whose lives and nation had been torn apart by a revolution and war for more than 10 years. He concludes an agreement with the Pope in the Concordat of 1801, which recognized that Roman Catholic Christianity is a preferred faith in France. However, France still re France retains the church lands but pays the salaries to the clergy. There's also freedom of religion, also for Protestants and Jews, which is quite interesting. He also publishes the he also writes the Napoleonic Code, which is still used broadly in the world today. It grants the it grants the equality of all adult men, establishes a merit merit based system for education and employment, and restores some private property lost to aristocrats. However, he restored patriarchal authority in in the family. Napoleon championed equality under the law, but not political free. Uh, Political, but not political freedom. He it, he imposes a tight tight control on the newspapers, uses a secret police force, and arrested suspected political opponents. He also systematically uses propaganda and ignored ele elective bodies. Napoleon eventually goes on a conquering spree, conquering a, Iberia, the Iberian Ital and Italian peninsulas as well as the Netherlands. He forced Austria, Prussia, and Russia to enter into alliance. His he even he disastrously invades Russia in 1812. Napoleon was able to capture Moscow, but was defeated by Russian weather and the scorched earth policy. This is where the whole notion of him getting defeated by General Winter comes from. The British, Austrian, Prussian, and Russian armies forced Napoleon to abdicate in 1814. He is exiled to the island of Elba, escaping to take power again for 100 days before being defeated again by British and Prussians at Waterloo, where after which he is exiled to St. Helena and dies there in 1821. So this is a map depicting Napoleonic, the Napoleon and his empire and his allies. As you can see, he you know conquers a vast swath of territory, but is stopped by the Russians and is pushed back. Back. The Haitian Revolution was the only successful slave revolt in history. It occurred in the island of Hispaniola, which comprises the Spanish colony of Santo Domingo now in the east, now known as the Dominican Republic, and the French colony of Saint, Saint Domingue in the west, now Haiti. It was a rich Caribbean colony, relying on sugar, coffee, and cotton for its, for its economy. It comprised almost one third of France's total foreign trade. In 1790, there were 40,000 French, like white French settlers in the, on the island of Saint Domingue who dominated the social structure. Below them were the 30,000 gens de couleur, free people of color, i.e., mixed race or free slaves. They were holders of small plots. Below them were 500,000 black slaves of African descent, and they had a high mortality rate, with many of them fleeing to the mountains. You know, for as you know, they eventually formed maroon, like maroon civilizations of escaped slaves. Many slaves were raised to captives and former warriors, as as the slaves just couldn't live long enough to breed. The revolt was inspired by American and French revolutions. Five hundred gens de colliers, colliers are said to fight fret the British and the American War of Independence. They were churned with the intent to reform society. In 1789, white settlers in Saint Domingue demand self-rule, but with no equality for free people of color. This unsurprisingly leads to mass leads to chaos. As in 1781, a civil war breaks out between white settlers, white settlers, and free people of color. Slave revolt under a voodoo, under a voodoo priest named. 
Bookman arises. However, French, British, and Spanish forces attempt to intervene. A man, a man named Toussaint would eventually become a very key role in this. Eventually, play a key role in this revolution. He was a descendant of slaves, freed in 1776. He built an army of 20,000, eventually dominating Saint Domingue. He renames himself Liberté, or the opening, in 1791. In 1801, he sets forth a constitution granting the equality and citizen granting equality and citizenship to all residents. He did not declare independence then because he did not want to provoke Napoleon, but that doesn't stop Napoleon from Napoleonic forces from arresting him in 1802, where and after that he dies in jail. His followers drove managed to drive French troops out. It also helped. It also helped that many of the French died from yellow fever. This forced Napoleon to sell Louisiana to Jefferson. In 1803 and 1804, Haiti declares independence. In mainland Latin America, there were 30,000 peninsulares, or colonial officials from the Iberian Peninsula. Below them were 3.5 million Creoles, or Creoles, born in the Americas of pure Spanish and Portuguese descent, with 10 million others, including African slaves, mixed race populations. The Creoles were the privileged class, but, grie but, but have grievances with the peninsulares. Just like the British colonies, how the white American born British were not treated equally as the as the uh, like as the British born British officials, in 18, from 1810 to 1825, these Creoles will lead movements, uh, lead movements for Creole dominated republics. Napoleon's invasion of Spain and Portugal in 1870 weak, weakens rule of authority in the colonies. You had a priest named Miguel de Hidalgo who leads a peasant revolt. Note, most clergy were much more conservative than, than he was. Hidalgo was captured and executed by conservative Creoles, but the rebellion continues. The Creole general Augusto de It Iturbide declares independence in 1821. He installs himself as emperor, but he becomes the, but he is deposed in 1823 when a republic is established. The southern regions form, form a confederation, but then they split up into Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua, and Costa Rica. Simon Bolivar leads the independence movement in South America. He is a Creole native of Caracas and was influenced by Enlightenment and considered George Washington a hero. He rebels against the Spanish rule in 1811. Is, however, he is for however he after he is forced into hiding. He forms alliances with many Creole leaders, such as Jose de San Martin in Argentina and Bernardo O'Higgins in Chile. That sounds like an Irish name, just so you know. Spanish rule. And as a result of his actions, Spanish rule is destroyed in South America by 1825. He, Bolivar, hoped to form a U.S. style confederation called Gran Colombia, comprising of Venezuela, Colombia, and Ecuador. He attempts to bring in Peru and Bolivia. However, strong political differences cause Gran Colombia to disintegrate. It's basically like plowing, in, plowing the sea, aka fool's errand. Bol Bolivar is is deeply up, is humiliated and goes into self-imposed exile where he dies of TB. Napoleon's invasion of, of Portugal since Portuguese sent the royal Portuguese court to exile in Rio de Janeiro. In 1821, the king returns, leaving behind his son Pedro as regent. Pedro negotiates with the Creoles and declares the independence of Brazil, proclaiming himself Emperor Pedro I and establishes and establish a Brazilian monarchy. He, however, the social structure remains largely intact. So this is a map depicting Latin America in 1830 as in 1830, as we can see. Very all these uh, st all these colonies gained independent gained independence in like in the 1820 the 1820s because of the fact that Napoleon's invasion has greatly undermined Iberian authority. I did now. And then now, in response to the American and French revolutions, you had the emergence of ideologies. Ideology means the belief in a particular social is defined as a belief that is a partic that a particular social and political organization is ideal. Conser you have conservatism and liberalism today. You, you also have later ideologies of socialism, oops, socialism and nationalism, as well as Marxism. Conservatism was a response to the American and French revolutions. Its father was Edmund Burke, who was a member of parliament in Britain. He viewed society as an organism that changed slowly over generations. He also said that we are connected to our ancestors and our descendants. 
he, he heavily emphasized tradition. He approved of the American and French revolutions as they were gradual evolutions, but not the French revolution because he believed it was too radical. Liberalism took change as normal and welcomed it as an agent of progress. Now, this is classical. Now, keep in mind, this is classical liberalism, not modern American liberalism, which is more progressivism. He viewed conservative, conservatives as defenders of the illegitimate status quo. It sought to manage, not stifle, social change, and championed the Enlightenment ideas of freedom and equality, and usually favored Republican forms of government in which citizens elected representatives. One of its one of its key architects was John Stuart Mill. He he argued he argued for the promotion of the freedom of individuals to pursue economic and intellectual interests. He advocated universal suffrage as key to legitimacy, rely on basically rely on consent of the governed. He pushed for the taxation of business profits and high personal incomes as he was wary of elites, and he wanted to extend rights to women and working people. He eventually democracies would fulfill these. Fulfill this desire as the voting went from a privilege to a right over time. The Enlightenment helped ins inspire the campaign to, the end sla to end slavery at the beginning of the 18th century because many people fought. Some Enlightenment philosophers fought, you can't really have slaves when we are proclaiming ideas of liberty. It gains momentum after the American, French, and Haitian revolutions. And we'll William Wilberforce, a philanthropist, succeeds in having Parliament outlaw the slave trade in 1807. It becomes the first major European country to abolish the slave trade. Other states follow suit, but the illegal trade continues until 1867. In Haiti, slavery ends with the revolution. In Mexico, it is abolished in 1829. This is partially to stop the U.S. development of, the, of a slave-based cotton industry in Mexican Texas. In 1833, Britain abolishes slavery and offers compensation to former owners. Other states follow, but all offer freedom without equality, Im imposing property requirements, literacy tests, etc., and vote like block voting and poll taxes to dis to dis to weaken the to weaken the power of the new newly freed slaves. Brazil was the last country to abolish slavery. Alignment figures remained conservative regarding women's rights. Rousseau, are, for example, Rousseau argued that women should receive education to prepare life. To prepare for lives as wives and mothers, you also, the the French suffragist Olympe de Gorges is guillotined, and Mary Astel argued that women were essentially born into slavery. Mary Wollstonecraft wrote a vindication of the rights of women, arguing that women possessed all the rights that Locke had granted the man. She insisted on education. Women were activated in all phases of the French Revolution. For example, they stormed Vers the, Vers the Vers they stormed Versailles in 1789, demanding food. Republican revolutionary women patrolled the streets of Paris with firearms, yet, hold, yet few of them hold official positions of authority. The French Revolution granted equality, equality in education, property, and legalized divorce. However, some of these rights are taken back under Napoleon, and women are still not allowed to vote. As and this and the fight to allow women to vote would become a major task in the 19th century, with, with women such as Elizabeth Cady Stanton leading the way as well as the Seneca Falls Convention in a landmark event. This was concurrent with the, the anti-slavery movement. The, the Napoleonic Wars helped spread the spread of the concept of nationalism. A nation was a type of community, especially prominent in the 19th century. It was distinct, it was distinct from clan, religious, and relig regional identities or dynastic traditions. It was usually based on a shared language, customs, values, and historical experience, and sometimes a common religion. It's basically an imagined community. Cultural nationalism glorified the culture of a certain people. For example, Johann Gottfried von Herder praised the Volk, or the people. He, he believed that literature and folklore and music were expressions of the Volk, Volksgeist, or the spirit of the people. He emphasized a study of language and history. However, cultural nationalism would lead to the rise of anti-Semitism, as, as, cult, as cultural nationalism needed an other, an enemy, to target. Political nationalism advocated for the move was a movement for the political independence of nations from authorities. It advocated for the unification of national lands, for example, Greece. However, sadly, nationalist identity ideologists are distrustful of indigenous minorities. Pogroms or violent attacks on Jewish communities, Jewish communities in Russia. Or for, for example, you had pogroms or violent attacks on Jewish communities in, in the Russian Empire beginning in 1881. Anti-Semitism becomes a rallying cry of many European nationalists, with 
you know, with with a bunch with a bunch of with them spreading a bunch of crap, such as the protocols of the elder, elders of Zion forgery, as well as the bloodlust nonsense. And the, the French military captain Alpha Dre, the Jewish French military captain Alfred Dreyfus, is framed for selling military secrets to Germany. He he's actually he was completely innocent in actuality. He's eventually exonerated, but there's a great debate on the loyal of Jews in European societies. This is, eventually becomes known as the Dreyfus Affair. It called into question, into question the previous strategy of assimilation. This becomes a key event in the evolution of Zionism. Theodor Hetzel it was a journal at the time who had become the founder of Zionism was a journalist at the Dreyfus trial. He was shocked by the armies of prosecution of Dreyfus. He observed intense uh, anti-Semitic mobs and concluded that the Enlightenment Revolution could not dis could not solve as human ill. He worked to create a refuge for Jews by re-establishing the Jewish a Jewish state in Palestine. Basically, Zion becomes synonymous with Jerusalem. In 1897, he convenes the first World Zionist Congress. Anti-Semitism continues to this day in the form of pro-Palestinian Europeans, notions of anti-Israeli imperialism, some European Muslims, Americans tired of hundreds of billions of dollars of aid given to Israel because of politically powerful American Jews, uh, slurs in the form of bankers and New York values, and Muslim oil power. You also get on the far right in Europe. The Congress of Vienna was a meeting after the defeat of Napoleon. It was convened by Prince Nederich, who, who supervised the dismantling of Napoleon's empire and returned sovereignty to Europe's royal families and established a balance of power. This was a conservative reaction, as it worked to suppress the development of nationalism among multinational empires like the Austrian-Hungarian Empire that Metternich was a part of. It unfortunately had limited success, as it could not suppress the ideas of popular sovereignty. You had national rebellions in the form of the Greeks in the Balkan Peninsula seeking independence from the Ottoman Turks in 1821. With European help, Greece achieves independence in 1830. In 1840, rebellions sweep all over Europe. It brought down the French monarchy and seriously threatened the Austrian Empire, with the, rebel with the rebels taking Vienna and Metternich resigning and fleeing. But by the summer of 1849, the veteran armies of conservative rules have put down the last of the rebellions. Basically, this is concession and then repression. Now, you, that nationalism would not be stopped as you had the unification of Italy and Germany. These were both formerly disunited groups of regional kingdoms, city states, and church states. Ital Italy, Italian regions controlled by French, the French, Austrians, formerly Spanish, and the Normans. German, in Germany, you had over 300 partially self governing jurisdictions. However, national sentiment begins bubbling up and develops into, a set, into the idea of unification. Cavour and Gabor Garibaldi unified Italy and the King Victor Emmanuel, Vittor Emmanuel II. In 1859, Cavour cleverly uses France to expel Austria from northern Italy. In 1860, Garibaldi's red shirts, red shirt and nationalists marched north from Sicily. Over the next decade, Italy takes over Venice and the Papal States and Rome. So this is a map depicting the slow, gradual process of Italian unification. In 1862, Odo von Bismarck is appointed Prime Minister of Prussia. He advances real politique, or the politics of reality, using three short wars with neighbors to unify Germany. He believed that unity will, not co will come not by votes and speeches, but by blood and iron. The Second Reich is proclaimed in 1871, with King Wilhelm I being proclaimed emperor. Germany becomes incredibly nationalistic. And this is a picture, de picture depicting Otto von Bismarck. So this is a map depicting the slow unification of Germany. And this is a map of what Germany was before unification. Just an absolute mess of like various territories. And that is all.